so hello everyone welcome to my video so I have been reading a little bit about system design right right there was just a one pager on gRPC which stands for Google remote procedure call I have come across this term in my work and I have in fact actually worked with gRPC but I didn't have like a really good understanding of what it means and why is it better and so on you know I, I went tangential and then I kind of started reading more about gRPC and protocol buffers and that's what actually I want to share with you in this video now you know let's step back and talk about service to service communication right I'll give you some context and then we can go into protocol buffers and then I'll show you an example which kind of uh, you know makes it more clear for you right so stepping back so basically service to service communication right like you know it's this is very normal right when you have like one application or a service I mean it, if it's a very simple service it can operate in silo like basically it doesn't interact with any other service right but it's very common to see like one service interacting with another in a, in a technology company right I'll give you an example like let's say let's take Amazon right so when you click buy now button on the website it actually translates to you know some calls right some API calls in in the buy service you know they might be calling it something different but then basically it's the service that performs buying related operations now now the buy service might be interacting with a product service or a pricing service or a sell service like to retrieve whatever information like for example when you're buying uh, the service needs to make sure there is enough quantity of that product that you're trying to buy so it calls another service to get the quantity information of that product now I am actually like I've been very familiar with REST right which stands for representational state transfer now I have seen the usage of REST in combination with JSON messaging format right now let me talk about serialization and deserialization right so serialization is when basically in, in your service you're trying to send some data to another service but this data needs to be converted to a certain format you know so that it is easy to store uh, or transmit and then when that data gets to the other service it actually you know it basically deserializes that data right and then it it basically that format is converted into an object that that particular language can work with right so that's actually serialization and deserialization every now and then I would come across gRPC which I believe will become more and more common right and if you haven't guessed already like gRPC Google remote procedure call is basically invented by Google and remote procedure call is like calling a procedure in a remote place right a procedure that resides in a remote location right so basically one service calling another service which is residing elsewhere and it's not just calling the service it's just invoking a certain procedure in that service so that's remote procedure call and obviously Google invented this it came up with this for its own internal purposes and then it was made public and now it's open source and so on now I'm not going to get into HTTP 2 and HTTP 1.1 basically I'm not going to get into HTTP but that's a separate topic let's look at an example and hopefully that will answer this question like why is a protobuf which is a short form for protocol buffer more efficient than JSON I have a test class where I'm actually serializing this data in a couple of different formats let's look at the first example over here which which most people might be familiar with right which is like you know you have an object and in this case I have a person class right which has a bunch of attributes like name email phone number distance right and and has a constructor and so on so you have a class and then that class is actually like you know I'm creating an instance of the class and I'm using the object mapper uh, library 
to to convert that into like a, a serialized JSON message, right? So basically, I'm, I'm printing it, and then I'm measuring the size of the 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 message, and I'm printing the size, right? And so that's one thing that I'm doing. Now the second thing is I'm actually again I'm doing something similar, but I have all these different you know different methods like new builder build and I have all these methods that's coming from another class right now how did I convert an object into a protocol buffer message format so let's look at that now to start with actually in protocol buffer you need to have like a dot proto file and in this file actually you can define like you can put the definition of your messages and you can put the definition of your services and I'm not going to get into services uh, in this in this uh, video so you have the messages and the definitions uh, specifically in this file this file called dot proto file you can call this whatever I'm calling it person dot proto now look at this actually I'm actually deleting this code right I have deleted this code I'm going to use this proto C utility which I downloaded from this protocol buffer github I downloaded the one for Mac right and and I actually put the proto C um, utility or executable in the user local bin directory and then I put put it in the path variable environment variable so I can invoke it from anywhere so now I can use this proto C utility and since I'm working with Java I'm, I want to generate Java source code based on this this dot proto file actually so when I do that it basically creates like a another class with a bunch of like you know setters and like all these you know all these methods right so it creates like some source code like we don't have to go into it but basically it creates like the source code for us but based on this definition file we generated some source code and then using the source code I'm actually creating the the protobuf message and then now it's ready to be sent to the server like basically this other service where it can process this data so when you have a message serialized in protobuf it basically it is in binary format as opposed to json json is in text format actually right and when i run this main method it actually shows you that clearly so you see like the first part is actually protobuf and the second part is json so when I actually serialize the data in into protobuf format and then I actually like I'm using this this part to convert the binary data into exa data right x format exa format just for uh, the readability purpose because when I print like a binary message it's going to be zeros and ones which is going to be like a lot actually right so uh, for simplicity actually I've converted it into exa so now I'm printing that and you can see the protobuf message size is only 43 bytes and this the JSON message format right where actually I'm pretty much transferring the same data in fact like you can see you know in both the cases the data is the same but you can see the JSON message size is 88 bytes as opposed to 43 bytes in protobuf and this actually kind of explains the essence of this whole thing right because when you have a protobuf message it's going to be small message even though you're transferring almost the same data that you would have transferred in JSON right so it's actually is smaller in size so now it's going to be more efficient to work with this message to send this message to the other service and so on 
before I actually end this video, let me explain a bit about type safety. Now, in JSON, you could be like sending a sending data, you know, like this. In this case, actually, age is is also being sent as a text, right? Whereas you can imagine like age is like usually an integer, right? So when you're working with JSON, it's easy to actually make this kind of mistake, right? So you send like a text value where uh, integer is expected. So now the service which is receiving this data, it might error out, it might be expecting an integer data type, but you're sending like a uh, text data. So which is actually avoided because you have like strong type enforcement in protobuf like because you are defining your messages ahead so when you are generating or serializing your data in you know in protobuf you're basically you're sticking to these definitions so there are like you know zero chances that you will actually be sending like you know improper or incorrect data format like you know values with incorrect data format actually so okay hopefully that's clear i know like it's like a big narrative but i kind of like condensed everything into uh you know like a story right like you have like grpc and which is similar to rest in rest we work with json in the olden days xml i didn't show like an xml example i don't think it's relevant anymore so we work with json uh you know and grpc uses something called protocol buffer of course like we have http2 versus http1.1 which has its own advantages but like we focused on protocol buffer and protocol buffer uh you know requires like a definition file like this where you define the message uh you know where you actually put the message definition and then we use the proto c to actually like you know kind of uh we actually use it to generate the source code and then we use that source code actually to serialize and deserialize data and i haven't shown you like the deserialization part here it's not required the point is to actually like show that like the size of like a proto, proto buff message is actually very small like 43 bytes as opposed to 88 bytes in this example and because of that the system is going to be more efficient and faster and then it has other advantages like of course we we were able to generate code and you can also generate code on the server side which i haven't shown hopefully in the future videos i will be able to show some examples for that but also the type safety right like you know basically we are able to stick to you know strict requirements like basically you can send only you know messages of certain types which is which is not as strong in JSON actually, right? So that's pretty much it. Hopefully uh, it explained a few things clearly. Thanks for your time.